when I announced the title of this presentation to my fellow climate scientists, some of my colleagues came up to me and they asked, are your kids okay? Well, I can tell you that my three children are doing fine. In fact, this presentation is not about my children, but it's about children all over the world. Let me nonetheless start by showing you a picture of my youngest son. This is Gaspar, and he was zero years old in 2020. Now, on the left, you can see my mother, and she was 60 years old in 2020. Now, before we start this presentation, I would like to ask all of you to think about your own age, but also of the age of someone that is really close to your heart. And then let me ask you this question. Will a newborn experience more climate extremes than a 60-year-old? Well, I guess that you will all agree with me that the answer to this question is, of course, yes, a newborn will face more climate extremes than a 60-year-old. But then comes the next question. Sure, but how many more? Now, this is something that we climate scientists hadn't quantified until recently. <clears throat> now, there are three reasons why this is an important question. First, it is a question of huge societal relevance. Since 2018, young people from around the world have been leading climate demonstrations. These young people have been organizing protest marches school strikes, and even recently hunger strikes to ask for more ambitious climate action. Meanwhile, governments fail to reduce CO2 emissions. In fact, current climate pledges put us on a path towards 2.4 degrees of global warming by the end of the century, which is far more than what these same countries agreed upon in the, in the Paris Climate Agreement. Now, this situation holds the risks of turning into a generation conflict. A generation conflict whereby young people will face the consequences of decisions made by older people, while these older people won't live to see the day that the consequences of their decision-making becomes a reality. Or, to put it in simple terms, OK Boomer. The second reason why this is an important question is climate litigation. People from around the world are today suing fossil fuel companies for their contribution to the climate crisis and countries for their lack of climate ambition. Every, every week there are new cases in the media. In the meantime, France, Germany, the Netherlands and Belgium were already convicted. Now, in many of these cases, these cases were started by young people who claim that the lack of sufficiently ambitious climate action hampers and violates their children's rights. So asking whether a 15-year-old will face more climate extremes than a 60-year-old is also an important legal question. Because if so, that 15-year-old is also better positioned to start a lawsuit. Thirdly, it is also a very interesting scientific question to ask. And that is because it requires a paradigm shift in climate science. Let me show you an example to explain this point. In climate science, we typically study how an element of climate change evolves over time. As you can see in this picture, we have a figure with, on the x-axis, time, and on the y-axis, the land area annually exposed to heat waves. Now, in recent years, the land area exposed to heat waves has been gradually increasing. Now, in climate science, we then calculate how this uh, variable may evolve under different possible future warming scenarios. Under a 1.5 degree global warming scenario, the land area annually exposed may increase to about 20%. Under 2 degree warming, this increases to about 30%. And under current policy pledges, we end up above 40%. So in climate science, we essentially compare 
windows of time to each other. However, this approach does not allow us to quantify what climate change means around 2020 for a real person living in a real country. Let's take the example of someone born in 1960. This person will on average live until around 2030. In contrast, a child born today will on average still be alive in 2100. In other words, that child will live to see the day when one of these possible climate futures becomes the reality. Now, in our research, we quantified the total number of heat waves that a person will experience across their lifetime. And if we do that for the 60-year-old, we find that this person will face, on average, four extreme heat waves across their lifetime. We also find that this number is very much independent of the future warming trajectory that we will follow. In contrast, a newborn will face 17 extreme heat waves across their lifetime under one and a half degrees global warming and almost 30 extreme heat waves under current pledges. Now, this approach allows us to compare generations to each other. For example, under 1.5 degree global warming, a newborn will face four times more extreme heat waves compared to a 60-year-old. Under two degrees of global warming, this increases to six times. And under current policy pledges, a grandchild will face seven times more extreme heat waves compared to their grandparents. Now, in our research, we performed these calculations for every generation born between 1960 and 2020, and for every potential real, uh, realistic global warming scenario. We then get a figure that looks like this, where we have age on the x-axis and global warming level on the y-axis. And we can then fill up this space with our exposure multiplication factors, that factor by how many the exposure will increase compared to a reference. And for the reference, we take here a person living in a world without climate change. If we do that, we get this result. In this graph, you can now look up the age of yourself and of your beloved one and find out how many more climate extremes this person will experience. Because every color that you see in this graph corresponds to an exposure multiplication factor that you can look at in the color bar. Let's take one example. A newborn under three and a half degrees of global warming, which is this upper right corner of the figure, a newborn under three and a half degrees of global warming will experience 44 times more extreme heat waves compared to the reference of a person living in a world without climate change. And this is far beyond the color scale, which is even shown in this figure. Now, so far, I've only been talking to you about heat waves. But in fact, we performed these calculations for wildfires, crop failures, droughts, river floods, heat waves, and tropical cyclones. Now, this approach allows us to compare these numbers across these extreme event categories. We already saw the picture for the heat waves, and we can now generate the same picture for all the other extreme events. Now, the general result is that lifetime extreme event exposure increases towards higher warming levels and younger generations. Climate change has little influence on lifetime exposure of generations older than 55, but this rapidly changes for younger generations as they start experiencing climate extremes in the next decades. Just to take one example again, under three degrees of global warming, a six-year-old will face twice as many wildfires, twice as many tropical cyclones, three times as many river floods, four times as many crop failures, six times as many droughts, 
and 36 times as many heat waves. Now, these are some frightening numbers, especially for me, who has an oldest son of exactly that age. Now, in these graphs, you also see gray lines. If you're above or to the right of that gray line, you will live what we call an unprecedented life. This means that you will face a number of extreme events which is far beyond what one could expect in a world without climate change. Now, as you can see, there are no gray lines for crop failures and heat waves in the middle column. This means that for these categories of extremes, every generation will live an unprecedented life under every potential future warming scenario. In addition, people that are 40 years old or younger will in addition live an unprecedented life in terms of exposure to droughts and river floods. So far, I've, always, I've only been talking to you about global averages. But in our research, we also calculated how these results differ across regions. And we find that young generations in the Middle East and North Africa will by far face the strongest increase in lifetime extreme event exposure. People under 25 in that region will face a sevenfold increase in lifetime exposure to climate extremes. And newborns in the Middle East and North Africa will even face a ninefold increase in lifetime extreme event exposure. The results get even more striking when we, we calculate, when we group the countries by income. The results show that young generations in low-income countries will face by far the strongest increases in lifetime extreme event exposure. Now, this is problematic for three reasons. First of all, young people in these countries contributed the least to the problem as they generated far less CO2 emissions than older generations in rich countries. Second, young people in these countries are also most vulnerable to climate change and its impact. And third, there are today many children born in those hard-hit regions. Just to give you one example, between 2015 and 2020, 64 million children were born in Europe and Central and West Asia, including also my son. And those 64 million children, they will face a fourfold increase in lifetime extreme event exposure under current policy pledges. However, in that same period, 206 million children were born in Sub-Saharan Africa. And those 206 million children, they won't face a fourfold, but a sixfold increase in lifetime extreme event exposure. So next to the fact that the strongest burden of climate change falls on children in low-income countries, there are today also, there is a dazzling large number of children that is today in that situation. So you might be thinking by now, well, we're all doomed, aren't we? Well, I can assure you that this is not the case. Indeed, young people today have most to lose if we go to high warming levels. But we can also turn this around. Young people have most to gain if we increase climate ambition. If you look at this map of the lifetime heat wave exposure of newborns compared to 60 years old, you see dark red colors everywhere. This means that in every country of the world, grandchildren will face far more heat waves compared to their grandparents under climate, current climate pledges. But if we limit global warming to one and a half degrees, you see that the colors in this map becomes much lighter. This means that the burden on young generations is substantially reduced if we limit global warming to one and a half degrees instead of current pledges. In the case of heat waves, this intergenerational burden reduces by 40%. So a clear message of hope and a clear call to action emerges from this research. 
we must limit global warming to one and a half degrees for safeguarding the future of current young generations. Now, finally, if you want to find out what climate change means for you, I could recommend to have a look at this website, myclimatefuture.info, where you can get all of these numbers. If you share these results on social media, you can contribute to raising awareness of climate change and contribute to the solutions. I thank you for your attention.